The fact that we're even talking about this positional battle at this point in the offseason, I think, is an overwhelmingly good sign for LSU football. But it's an important positional battle nonetheless. You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome into Locked On LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also check us out on YouTube as well, in addition to your preferred podcast platform. However you interact with the podcast, like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, all that great stuff. Just appreciate you always for being here and for always making us your first listen every single day. Today's edition of Locked On LSU is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So today is officially the first day of the spring transfer portal window opening. We will keep you updated with any players that LSU plans to target in the transfer portal. Of course, we know Brian Kelly spoke with the media earlier this week and said that defensive tackle will be the only position that they're targeting in the transfer portal. I think that's a wise move, at least to target uh, defensive tackles. That is a, a position of desperate need for LSU at this point in the season. But you never know. You never know if there's a great player that enters the transfer portal at a position outside of defensive tackle that you didn't at least intend to enter the transfer portal. So we'll keep an eye on that right now. As of time of recording on Tuesday afternoon, Jackson Howard, the redshirt freshman edge rusher, who was a, a five-star edge rusher in the 2023 recruiting class. My years are all mixed up at this point in the, in the calendar. Um, he has entered the transfer portal. So far, the only player from LSU to do so, but Gerger Loins, more to come. So before we look ahead, we're going to get into that on tomorrow's edition of Locked in LSU, so stay tuned for that. Before we look ahead to the transfer portal and targets to add, first, I want to look back on the spring game. A couple of tidbits that I wasn't able to get to on yesterday's podcast that I think are pertinent little tidbits to take away from the spring game. Again, remember, it's a spring game. It's a glorified practice. Yes, it's a wonderful opportunity to get a peek behind you know, what the depth chart looks like to get an opportunity for fans to head to Tiger Stadium and to see a little glimpse behind the curtain of what this 2024 squad is shaping up to be. But remember, it's a glorified practice. So we're going to apply our locked on LSU rule of practice here. You never get too high and you never get too low based off of what you saw from practice. But it's interesting. I think spring games are interesting for one specific thing, and that's positional battles. And LSU finds themselves firmly in a backup quarterback battle. Now, I'll be honest with you. If we're talking about a backup quarterback battle at this point on April 16th, that means your offense is in pretty good shape. Now, of course, that's obviously not the only concern of this team. Defensive tackle is a concern and the secondary is a concern and maybe not a, a concern necessarily, but more a question is the run game. So I'm not acting like there's just a ton of problems that don't exist that I'm choosing to ignore. But let's focus in on the offense today, on the backup quarterback battle. We saw both A.J. Swan, the Vanderbilt transfer, and Ricky Collins, the second-year quarterback who sat behind Garrett Nussmeyer and Jaden Daniels last season, saw very few, very limited reps against Grambling last season. We saw him take a little bit of a step forward and really Frankly, based off of what I saw from the spring game, it seemed like he got a little bit more of a nod as the QB2. What I saw, just based off of my takeaways, and look, the coaching staff may have felt differently, based off of their knowledge of the second team offense, based off of their knowledge of the second team defense that they were going up against, it seemed like Ricky Collins had the edge on Saturday. And before we get into what Brian Kelly had to say about the backup quarterbacks, I'll say this. If Ricky Collins does show you enough in you know enough in the offseason to give him the nod to be QB2, to be that guy that if Garrett Nassmeyer comes out for a couple of plays, a couple of series, even a game or two, 
if he shows you that he can be the guy that can come in and he doesn't need to be Superman, he doesn't need to be Heisman Trophy candidate, if he can prove to you that he can come in and he can execute this offense at a high enough level that all he's doing is getting the ball in the hands of his playmakers and he's taking care of the football, if Ricky Collins can show you that in the offseason and he gets the nod as QB2, I think that that's the best case scenario for this LSU football team. Not just in 2024, but in 25, in 26, and beyond. And I'll explain why. Because Ricky Collins looks to be more of the future than A.J. Swan. That Ricky Collins, if Garrett Nussmeyer, let's say, you know, absolutely pops off this season and decides to declare for the NFL draft, because I believe that after this season, Garrett Nussmeyer has one more year of eligibility. But honestly, again, like I'd say it's like freaking like thermodynamic physics, rocket science, trying to figure out how many years of eligibility a player has. But Ricky Collins is now viewed at this point and things change as the future quarterback at LSU. That's it's what you recruited him to be. That's what he came to LSU to be. I'd much rather the future quarterback at LSU be your solution at QB2 in 2024 than a transfer that you brought in for insurance. That's no disrespect to A.J. Swan whatsoever. If he's the better quarterback in the offseason, if he gives you a better opportunity to win, if Garrett Nussmeyer does go down knock on wood, then he's the guy that's going to get the nod. Because in 2024, my priority is winning. I'm going to prioritize winning football games in 2024 more than I'm going to prioritize the development of a quarterback that might be your starter in 2025. But with that being said, if rookie Collins is the better option, then I think that's the best of both worlds. Frankly, if Ricky Collins can be your backup, if he can serve in that role where he's getting legitimate in-game experience in some of your cupcake games, if he comes in at halftime, like we saw Garrett Nussmeyer come in at halftime against Army and against Grambling and later in the game against Georgia State, if he can be the guy that learns those lessons by experience, let's say, knock on wood, Garrett Nussmeyer rolls his ankle up a little bit. He needs to come off the field for a couple of series, and Ricky Collins is coming off the bench cold, and he just has to figure it out. And he's coming into you know, situational football where it's third and you know six, and you got to figure it out. Like I think that's great experience for a young quarterback without throwing them into the fire. So I liked what I saw from Ricky Collins on Saturday. Was it perfect? No, it was not. And if you expected it to be, you look cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But coming up next, I want to get into what Brian Kelly had to say about the quarterbacks and some more takeaways from the, what we saw from the quarterbacks on Saturday in LSU spring game. And we'll continue this conversation after just a few words from our sponsors. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL and baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. So bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All on an app that is safe, that's secure, and it is so easy to use. So I live in Nashville. I do sports talk radio in Nashville, and the Nashville Predators are in the playoffs, and that is all the buzz in the city that I live in. And hey, this Predators team, they've been hot, they've been cold, but as of late, Philip Forsberg has been red hot. So while the Predators regular season has wrapped up, I'm looking ahead at a couple of prop bets for the Predators as they enter the playoffs, give me Philip Forsberg, anytime goal scorer in game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But hey, that's just my thought. Do it how you want to do it. Just do it with FanDuel. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. All right, I also want to tell you about Monopoly Go. Okay, so I've been told, just a time or two, I'm a little, I'm a little bit of a competitive person. That's something that I uh, I don't embrace, but I will admit, sometimes I'll be a little bit of a competitive person. I have a competitive side, and my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. 
I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It is such a fun and great twist on Monopoly where you can play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is, it's messing with my friends. That's the best part about Monopoly Go. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like the classic Monopoly. And trust me, that competitive side of me comes out when I'm playing a game of Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. And at the end of the day, I always hope that it's me. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. All right, rolling along here, Locked on LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and of course, we're part of the Locked On Network, your team every single day. And Locked On's NFL Mock Draft live show is on April 17th at 7 Eastern. Streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 Eastern to hear who the local uh, who the local lockdown experts are picking for every NFL franchise. There's live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle as well. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. I don't really long here locked on LSU. And one of my takeaways on Saturday was the backup quarterback battle is alive and well. Overall, I'm very pro quarterback battle. I don't like using the word controversy because I think it's dramatic. It's not a controversy. It's just a competition. Like, let's not be, let's not be dramatic here. But I am very pro quarterback battle, especially when it comes to young players. I think healthy competition is a good thing. I think that being pushed is a good thing. Welcome to the SEC. It's an awfully competitive place outside of your locker room and inside of your locker room as well. I think a, a quarterback competition or a competition really at any position, it keeps you sharp. It keeps you constantly on your edge. You're constantly being pushed by that person behind you that's ready to take your job or you're constantly motivated to take the job of the person standing between you and a starting opportunity, or in this case, a QB2 opportunity. So I'm pro quarterback competition. I want the quarterback competition to play out as long as possible, because what's the point of declaring a QB2 right now on April 16th? We've got a lot of time left from now until you take on USC in Vegas. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of practice left to be had. There's a lot of growth to be made. So I'm I'm pro dragging it out as long as possible. I'm pro quarterback competition. And frankly, as I explained in the last segment, I'm very pro Ricky Collins being your backup quarterback. But all of that to say, I'm pro the best option as we're backup and ultimately getting the backup job. If that's AJ Swan, because he's better. If that's AJ Swan, because frankly, he's had more experience at this level. Don't forget, he started the last two years at Vanderbilt, off and on and off and on, but he has SEC experience. He's gone up against SEC defenses. That's an edge and a leg up that he has over Ricky Collins because Ricky Collins hasn't done that. But you're gonna have to get that experience one way or another. Brian Kelly was asked about the quarterback competition, what he took away from some of these young quarterbacks, because of course, Garrett Nussmeyer had a fantastic day, but what about the backups? This was Brian Kelly on what he saw from Ricky Collins and AJ Swan. It, it, I think the defensive line had the upper hand on our offensive line. Those guys didn't get very comfortable in the pocket. Um, clearly, I don't know what the numbers were, but they it didn't appear to me standing back there they were very efficient. Um, but a lot of that was they, they didn't have a lot of time to get their feet set either as I was standing back there. And, again, I could be wrong when I watched the film, but um, I think Ricky was 50%. And, uh, you know, A.J. was 
you know, just, just a little bit better than 50%. Um, so, you know, we got some work to do there. You know, I thought the ball came out really well with, with Colin. Um, looked clean, looked efficient there. Um, you know, and Garrett was, was what, 7 of 7. So, um, we got some work to do there. So, you don't love where you're at with either of these quarterbacks. Let's look at glass half full and glass half empty. We've been doing a lot of that in spring football. Glass half empty. If the season started today and Garrett Nussmeyer got hurt today, you don't have a quarterback on this roster that you would feel good about stepping in and still achieving your goals that you have this season. And that's winning 10 plus games. That's getting to Atlanta. That's getting in the college football playoff. That neither Ricky Collins nor AJ Swan are starting caliber quarterbacks. Glass half full. Season doesn't start today. <laughs> like, it, that's a positive sign. Another aspect to that is I don't know how many schools across America would feel good about their backup coming in and being able to play at a high level. Now, of course, there are some. You were one last year. That if Jaden Daniels went down, Garrett Nussmeyer could have come in and could have executed the offense at a high enough level that you still could have won games. I look at Texas A&M last year. Let's not forget Connor Whitman was the starting quarterback. Then he went down with an injury, had season-ending surgery. After that Auburn game, Max Johnson came in. We know how good of a quarterback Max Johnson can be. We know that Max Johnson can play at a high level in this league. So just a couple examples there, but that's the exception and not necessarily the rule. So you don't feel great about where they are right now, but like Brian Kelly said, we got work to do. There's time to do that work. But I think overall my thing here as a glass half full approach is you have two options. You're not putting all of your eggs into the basket of Ricky Collins. And if it ultimately ends up being Ricky Collins, then great. You're that much more set up for a success for the future. If it doesn't end up being Ricky Collins, that's why you went into the portal and got AJ Swan. So you could have an experienced enough guy that's learned an SEC offense and is learning another one. He can do it again. He can come in and execute your offense at a high enough level to just take care of the football and go from there. And frankly, I'm not very surprised that, that Ricky Collins looks at least a little bit further along. Uh, maybe Brian Kelly has a different perspective that, on that than I do. Uh, I trust his opinion much more than I trust mine. But it doesn't surprise me. Because although this isn't Mike Denbrock anymore, it's still going to be a very similar offense. Joe Sloan and Cortez Hankton are still familiar with Ricky Collins, and he's familiar enough with them and the offense and the receivers. AJ Swan's coming into a completely new situation. Ricky Collins is coming into year two with this staff and with this team. So just kind of trying to keep that in mind as well. Another thing I always have to couch this with, it's going to be okay. Okay, we're going to have time. You're going to develop. These players are going to develop. Things are going to change from now until September. I can guarantee you that. Maybe for the better, maybe not. Uh, all right, coming up next. I wanted to hit this yesterday. didn't get an opportunity to, so I apologize that this is feels a little bit tardy. Uh, let's have a conversation about LSU baseball. And let me just tell you, it's not going to be a comfortable one. We'll get into that coming up next. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to qu find quality professionals that are right for the role. So that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I can personally attest because the radio station that I work for, we actually use LinkedIn Jobs. So I can personally attest that it's not just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you cannot find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but could be open to the perfect role, you can find those people on LinkedIn Jobs. In a given month, over 70%, 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites because they don't have to. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, then you're looking in the wrong place. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. So 
they they take care of you know you don't have to worry about putting up front the money for searching for a job plus linkedin on linkedin 86 percent of small businesses get a qualified candidates within 24 hours so hire professionals like a professional on linkedin post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college that is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply All right, rolling along here, Locked on LSU. Uh, coming up in tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU, we're going to get into Transfer Portal. Targets, who's entered the Transfer Portal, maybe some names that I've been hearing that could enter the Transfer Portal. All of that coming up in tomorrow's edition. Plus, we'll hit a mailbag Wednesday as well. So get those questions in. Feel free to comment them below on the YouTube page if that's how you are watching and listening. But you can also send those questions in on Twitter as well. My Twitter is right here below me on the YouTube page. But in case you're listening, that Twitter link or Twitter handle rather is at Caroline Fenton one. So we'll get into that on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU. Um, all right, let's have a difficult conversation. Let's talk about LSU baseball. Um, I remember a few weeks ago, I believe it was after the Arkansas series. There were several questions coming in from listeners. And of course, these were all conversations that we as LSU fans were having and were, I saw unfolding on social media. Is it time to hit the panic button? And I thought, look, I, I get it. They don't look good. They're just coming off of getting swept in a series that they could have won. Could have won the Florida series. In several different instances, if just one or two or three things went differently, maybe we're talking about this team in a different light. But those things didn't happen. So I said, look, I'm not going to hit the panic button yet because it's still early. But I'm definitely concerned. Today, I'm hitting the panic button. I hit the panic button on Saturday afternoon. And I hit it even firmer on Sunday after Tennessee got the sweep. LSU lost Friday, 6-3. to three. LSU lost Saturday in a game that seemed very winnable. You saw Luke Holman on the mound, lost 3-1. You can't afford to lose games that Luke Holman is pitching. And then ultimately fell to Tennessee 8-4 to four on Sunday. I could totally blow smoke up everybody's behinds and say, well, Tennessee's a team that averages 10 runs a game. And you held them to six in one game and three in another and eight to another. What a testament to the defense. What a testament to this pitching staff. I could say that, and yet those things are true. But I don't really care about those things right now. I don't care about trying to find silver linings or trying to look at it through a positive perspective. Frankly, because I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel as far as this team is concerned. Because it could be easy for me to say that at the beginning of conference play. When there was still at least a little bit more hope, or at least I had a little bit more hope. But at this point, I don't. At this point, we are five weeks into conference play, and you have yet to win a single series. I'm sure you've seen the same stat that I have. The last time that happened was 1977. We are entering unchartered territory. And look, this team's got talent. We had the most clutch in you know, powerful hitter, probably in all of college baseball last year, and Tommy White returning. He is an asset to you defensively as well on third base. If Hayden Travinsky, who was pivotal to that College World Series run last season, he returns. Hasn't really wowed you at the plate. You have Bear Jones, who some weeks looks great, in other weeks is really kind of dormant offensively. That's one that I would attest to from this past week. I don't, I don't really remember anything that Bear Jones did that was too spectacular. And look, the pitching, ugh, the pitching's not great. The defense is bad. Like overthrows to first base, overthrow from the catcher to third. Offensively, they cannot get anything moving, at least consistently enough. It seems like they'll take two steps forward and then three steps back. They'll get a couple guys on base, and then Tommy White hits into a double play. They'll be able to hit a dinger, but it's a one run when they're down by five runs. I'll take home runs any day of the week, but you're not going to get yourself out of many holes 
by hitting one one run bombs. I don't know what it is. Like I, I, I truly, I don't know what it is that is plaguing this baseball team because there's a lot of talent. We know that. We know what kind of talent is on that team because even though they don't have Paul Skeens or Dylan Cruz or Gavin Duas or Cade Beloso, so many leaders and foundational pieces of that team from last season, not only do you return several, you also bring in several through the transfer portal. Look at Michael Braswell, transfer from South Carolina, first team all SEC. He's done more harm than good for you, both defensively and at the plate. Paxton clings an automatic out. Like, it, it hurts me. It physically pains me when he comes up to the plate. As much as a weapon of he, that he is defensively, it's almost like, well, it doesn't even matter anymore. Because uh, that doesn't really help us. We just need guys that can get on base. And not just guys that can get on base. We need enough guys that can get to the plate and record a few hits so we can bring some of those guys home. It's the runners that are left in scoring position that drive me insane. The, you have the bases loaded. How many times against Tennessee? Twice? Three times throughout that series? I believe all you got from it was a single run. That's bad. It's panic button time. And it's not just panic button time because I think that the, because now I'm just realizing this team's not very good. Because I don't think that this team is very good. I think that the record shows that. I think it's panic button time because this team might not get to Hoover. This team might not get to the SEC tournament. There's only two teams that don't go to Hoover. And you might be one of the worst two teams in the Southeastern Conference. It's green 12 in conference play. That's bad. That is bad. This team is bad. That probably doesn't feel comfortable to say. And to, to hear, rather, it's not very comfortable to say. But you are what your record says you are. You can't beat good teams. So that doesn't make you a good team. And you just keep losing. That makes you a bad team. Now look, we're only halfway through conference play. Like there's still time left. You've got the lighter portion of the schedule coming up. Got Missouri, who has struggled. Auburn, who has struggled. And then, oh yeah, by the way, you get rewarded with the number one team in the country in Texas A&M and the team that just beat Arkansas in the best two out of three series, uh, Alabama. You know, Ole Miss, at least two struggling. So at least you have teams upcoming on your schedule that look like easier wins than a Tennessee team that's averaging 27 runs a game or a team like Arkansas with the best pitcher in the country. But even then, it still doesn't give me a lot of room for optimism. Because what am I supposed to be optimistic about? I'm optimistic about Luke Holman. That's really the brightest spot on your roster. The bullpen is inconsistent. The offense isn't just inconsistent. It's non-existent. The defense makes far too many mistakes for my liking. I don't like saying this because I don't like accusing people of things that I, I, I can't prove. My biggest concern is that I feel like they don't care. And I don't like saying that because I don't like accusing somebody of not caring about something. And I think that they do. I think that they do care. But the fact that I feel like they don't, that's the concern. Like when I saw Hayden Travinsky, this was Sunday against Tennessee. Hayden Travinsky is running from first to second, and he just slows down halfway through the base path and gets called out at second. I think it's probably because he just assumed that they were going to go and throw the out first. But they didn't. They threw him out instead. Like that's, where. where's the fire? Where's the desire? That's my concern. Where's the care? I don't see it. And I don't feel like it's there. I have never questioned the care of an LSU baseball team. Never. It's one thing to not be good enough. It's one thing to just not have as much talent. It's a complete different story when you just don't feel the... You don't feel a dog. You don't feel the desire to be great. I feel like they do. But there's a... 
maybe some larger questions surrounding this program. And it sucks. It sucks. And it sucked to be in Knoxville this past weekend. I am not going to lie. Uh, but that's going to do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, we'll break down Transfer Portal, the latest around LSU, at LSU. And, of course, we'll continue to touch on LSU baseball as well as they take on a midweek game against New Orleans on Tuesday night. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. More LSU news coming up on tomorrow's edition of Lockdown LSU.